now recording. Okay. Excellent. Okay. Well, all right, guys, let's get rolling. I like to start on time, so I'd like to thank everybody for coming on today. Uh, Walter and myself will be going through the, um, I can't say finance, but that's the best way to explain it, more like a layaway program. Very, very exciting. We're going over the ins and outs, what we're looking for, how they can benefit you, the benefits uh, plus and minus, and we'll be showing you actually a live back office view of this actual system uh, this way you can actually see it running and he will actually set up an account so you can actually see it so uh, should you be a leader that wants to get an account please uh you know we'll show you how to do that and then we will actually set you up so you'll be able to see how simple it really is okay so uh, well, i'm gonna uh, let, let me just see, uh, call you out first if you want to say something first and then um, i'll go and set up uh, my share yeah, I, I think we need to mute the call out. I think we're getting some background noise. Okay, everybody's muted. Let's see. Okay, good. I just muted, I just unmuted myself. Yeah, basically, what I want to you know the the only thing I want to start out by saying is how fortunate and uh, how exciting this revolutionary. Uh, finance slash layaway program really is for all of you. And I really want you to pay attention. And uh, I'm sure we'll have some questions asked later. If we have the time, we'll answer those questions. Otherwise, uh, just really pay attention to what we're going to be talking about today because it is really, really, truly revolutionary for the industry that we're in. No one other than us has this opportunity. No one in the, uh, in the high ticket industry has it. So, uh, I'm really honored to, to be here and uh, showing you guys all of this stuff. And as Peter said, we will be setting up, I'll, I'm going to set myself up in one of these accounts to show you how simple it really is. And any of the leaders out there, if you want to contact us, uh, please do so. And we'll be more than happy to add you to it. So Peter is going to now share his screen and go through a PowerPoint. And then when he's done with that, I'm going to actually give you a live presentation on how simple it is to fill out an application. Peter, take it away. All right, great. Uh, let me just check. Can you guys see my screen? Yes, sir. All right. So, Walter, please feel free to stop in any time during the presentation to make any comments, okay? So, sure. Uh, sure I, like, thing. I always like to do a tag team type of thing versus uh, hearing myself talk the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and I know you're well, you're well uh, briefed and you're also, in, you know, coming from the finance field as well too. So you have a lot of insights that I don't have as well. So um, on the first screen here, OPM, I'm sure you've heard that many, many times. OPM, what is OPM for the people that don't know what it is? Well, it's other people's money. There is such a thing as good debt and there's such a thing as bad debt. Unfortunately, Main Street usually uses bad debt. Okay, they see credit card debt. It's basically debt that's not creating income. It's sucking your income. Okay, is that not right, Walter? That is exactly <laughs> correct. Yeah, it's, it's sucking your income and it's not using other people's money correctly. So using other people's money is that you want to be able to leverage, that's the big word, leverage the finances of other people, the bank, whoever's loaning you the money or giving you the chance to leverage yourself so that this way you can uh, generate more money than the cost of the actual money you're getting loaned to you, okay? So, and it has to have some kind of an, an end in sight to it, so a plan to it, not just winging it out there, okay? That's the big thing again, Main Street versus Wall Street, that's the big thing. Wall Street leverages money for a positive gain, Main Street doesn't do that. And usually they get swallowed up by uh, finance, credit cards, things like that, and they don't use it to their advantage. They, get ha they have the advantage taken from them and using it against them instead of for them, okay? So we're going to show you a way to kind of get through that and use other people's money, OPM. So guys, based on what I said, have you ever wondered why, and I live in Manhattan, on almost every prime real estate, on the corner of a street, there's a bank. Wells Fargo, Citibank, Chase, all of these banks are right there on the corner on the prime real estate. Why? If you go in uh, almost any city in America, you see the biggest buildings, the biggest skyscrapers have bank names on them. Why? Because they know something, 
right? They know how money works. So if and so, this is not something that's foreign to most people. They think they don't know, but it's just an awareness and something you can learn about to use to your advantage. You don't have to go through life uh, blind to the way money really works. And you have, you have time really to change that. Now, I don't know uh, what kind of financial position you're in, obviously. I don't know how far behind the eight ball you are, but it doesn't matter where it is, you can turn that around. Okay, so if you've ever wondered how to get out from that, how to be able to use money to your advantage like the big boys do, like the wealthy do, and then we're going to be able to show you one aspect of it. Obviously, tonight we can't show you all aspects of it, but we're going to show you one aspect of leveraging through the positive of using other people's money okay so biggie how many of you on here please type in say yes would like me to share some of these secrets today on how to be able to do this you know and and i go into a lot of mental type of um building your business aspects we call i call it mentorship and going into the 90 percent on um how the business works your inner entrepreneur okay and growing and part of growing in your business is learning the techniques of the business learning the skill set of the business but also learning the inner entrepreneur and being the causal factor of your success so most people operate on the cause and effect equation on the effect equation they work on the effect side of the equation they're on the total opposite of the cause and effect equation and emerson said that cause and effect is the, is the law of laws and most people are on the effect side, which means they're a victim. They're a victim of everything happening to them instead of them working in their business, right? They have to working in their business. Everything is happening to them. They're being reactive to everything else that's going on, reactive to the political climate, reactive to the economic climate around the world, reactive to everything instead of being the causal factor right if you want to make the future happen the way you want it to the best way to do it is to create yourself and that's why we have the perfect position as entrepreneurs to be able to be the causal factor so if you want me to share this information with you and I already gave you some great nuggets tonight is the night to do that okay I want you to participate here and actually type things in because you want to use more of your senses not just listen and use some of your other senses typing things in and commenting if the need arises as well to be able to do this so this way you're going to really get this information okay so the problem and I kind of hinted on some of these already is that most people have this negative view of wealth okay they have this negative view of wealth and so why do the poor stay poor and the rich stay rich rich most of the time okay it's it's not always nothing is ever absolute but most of the time that happens is because it's a mindset okay it's a mindset of the way money works and unfortunately in our society right now there's this big uh, problem out there that the rich are bad the rich are taking all the money it's that top one percent and it's garbage it's not true okay yes you have some bad apples on both ends of the spectrum but what it is is that in society in certain areas of, of the society and think of the way you've been taught you're looking at wealth and wealth creation and your ability to earn in limited terms because it's all BS okay when I say BS I'm not talking about the term here that you normally used to okay this is a family show I'm talking about BS in terms of belief system okay it's your belief system that's holding you back your belief system in the way money works your belief system in the way that money can be made your belief system on rich versus poor your belief system on what you are actually worth so you have to change your belief system on money because if you're looking to make a hundred dollars an hour a thousand dollars an hour all and whatever number you pick in your head you are never going to be able to make that money if your if your belief system is sabotaging the way you're thinking right if your belief system says rich people are evil rich people take advantage of people all these types of things if your belief system says these types of things then what's going to happen is you are always going to sabotage yourself and you are not going to be able to earn what you think that you're worth okay so that's the first thing to always do is to change your BS system and you'll be able to look at money in a whole different way and now you're opening yourself up to be able to absorb new ideas new concepts and so on and overcome these limiting beliefs that you've had in your life 
So basically, what's the solution? How do you be able to um, get the car, the house, the money? If that's what you're after, I know there is a materialistic aspect to all of this, but we all know that money is not the end all be all, but it ranks right up there with oxygen, right? So we have to be able to do that. And, and money is actually a, a, a way, if you use it right, and if you do it as Wallace Waddle says, not in the competitive form, but in the creation form, right? So this way you can create and be a creative entrepreneur, not a competitive entrepreneur, and use money the right way. Money is an enabler so to help you to grow beyond your current capacity. It's a way that you can grow to be able to experience things you could never experience if you were not wealthy. To be able to go and travel the world and grow with the experiences of meeting new places and new people and new places and things like that and, and learning new things that you could not possibly do if you weren't, didn't have money. And also to be able to help and enable other people if you had money versus not having money. So these are, again, limiting, solution, limiting beliefs and the solution is, again, to change your thinking, because we can show you this method of OPM, but unless you change your thinking, what's going to happen again? Your belief system is going to sabotage yourself. And that's a whole other lecture or so on, and I'm just giving you a little taste of it here today. So again, we're talking today about OPM, other people's money. That could be any kind of way the money is going to be loaned to you, given to you, and to be able to use correctly to leverage yourself to earn more money, eventually to be able to pay off that loan, whatever it happens to be. And um, one thing that many people do sometimes is when they do get that money, they what they do? They, they relax because they think, oh, I got it now. And then they get even deeper in a hole. Okay, so again, the mindset is the big thing on how to do this. But other people's money, as we're going to show you in the system here, is going to help you to leverage yourself in our program. So the challenge is, to be able to do this are what is it all about? Okay, what is it all about? How does it work? What's the positive? What's the negatives? And to be able to grasp the idea and the concept that we're going to be laying on the, the doorstep of your home right now. Okay, we're going to give you this on a, on a silver platter tonight to be able to give you this information and say, listen, it's, it's available. Are you going to take it? So, all right. So, so how do you do this? What's the solution? Well, one way to be able to be able to be successful is copy somebody that's already successful. Okay? So if the rich know how to make money and how money works, you copy how the rich make money. Right? So uh, I, I did the culinary. My parents had a restaurant. And if I said, hey, listen, if I want to make the best chocolate cake in the world, I can go out and try to figure it out and try all these different recipes and try all these different combinations or – I could just say, wow, that person has already done it before. Let me just copy what they did. <laughs> that would probably be the smart way to do it. So here, why not copy the way rich people do it? And that's what we're doing tonight. All right, so in order to do that, you need a system. Okay, we're going to show you the system tonight. And it's a way to navigate directly to your goals instead of you trying to wing it. I tried to wing it for so long <laughs> and because I really didn't know anything at that time, way back when, about mentors and learning and all this kind of stuff. I just figured I had to figure it out and wing it myself. And you should see all these white lines going all over the place. It's painful. You may stumble upon success, but most of the time you are not going to stumble on success. You're going to be able to spend a lot of money in ignorance, okay, in figuring it out and eating a lot of humble pie in the cafeteria life. You're going to pay heavily in your entrepreneurial education and you'll probably quit. And that's the way it is, not just with this type of program, but also with anything you're learning, network marketing, whatever. If you try to wing it yourself, you're going to quit because you're going to get frustrated. So many of the leaders on here are begging for you to, to have, uh, uh, have you call them so they can teach you to maybe join one of their systems to get mentored to, to really step up to the plate and really accelerate your growth and go down the straight and narrow so this way you can accelerate your growth here. So we're going to do that tonight with the OPM. So we're going to introduce the new finance program. Now we're saying finance because technically you are being put into a finance program, but it's not your traditional finance program where we are, where you're going to be, if you're referring someone, getting the money up front, okay? So we'll describe how, what that means in a moment, and it's actually much better. So uh, we, uh, we really lower the risk, risk dramatically. All right, so Walter, if you can come on here as I go through this, sure. and we're going to go through five key highlights of the program. Number one, as I mentioned, this is not a finance program where traditionally you would get a loan 
the bank would give you the money, you would pay the person to get access to the higher ticket product that we're talking about. They would get the money up front, that's it, and then you pay it off over whatever the term is. A layaway is when you pay for something over time, but you don't get access to it until later. Once you pay it off, then you got it. But um, we differ in a big way in that we're gonna give you access to the product early. So, um, Walter, you wanna describe that maybe a little bit differently and someone will maybe uh, be able to attach with how you're doing it, how you explain it. Yeah, I use, I, I use Toys R Us, the old Toys R Us, Peter, as an explanation in the, in the days of uh, you know, the 90s and the early 2000s when Toys R Us, you go in to buy a, an expensive item and you're able to put it on layaway. You, they're holding it for you in the back in their warehouse with your name on it and you're coming in weekly or every other day or monthly and you're giving them twenty dollars fifty dollars a hundred dollars but i can't leave with that expensive item until i paid that last balance so what peter just described is you know you're going to have the ability to get the upper level in your in your program in your system immediately as soon as you are approved for this layaway program. Now it is a finance company, everybody, that is facilitating this. And they've been doing this for quite a while. So, you know, it is a finance program. We're calling it a layaway because no money is exchanging hands uh, up until the final payment. So you're gonna get your product up front versus after paying it off. Fair enough? Absolutely. Um these this are pretty simple, favorite. and I know you know these, so why don't you just cover these few? Sure, absolutely. What I love about this and how we set this all up is absolutely everyone qualifies. Now, there is a but there, okay? Even though everyone qualifies, we as people and leaders and members have to have some sort of fiduciary responsibility to vet these prospects and potential new members out. And what I mean by that is to check them out by asking certain qualifying questions like, what do you do for a living? How much money do you earn annually, monthly, whatever the case may be? You know, and even ask some, some you know, personal questions like, you know, what do you think your credit score is? And, you know, things like that. And that, you know, even though everyone qualifies, there's gonna be a point in time where you're gonna know in your heart and soul that someone is not right for this and they're not gonna perform. And if you feel that, please do the right thing. As Peter hears me say all the time, it's all about doing the right thing, okay? Yep, you wanna, go, you wanna bring them down to a lower product level? Because what, what does a bank do when they give you a loan? They wanna make sure you can pay it back, right? And you'll exactly. know if somebody can't pay these monthly payments, you'll know. No doubt. Now, this one I've been working on for the last three hours. Uh, <laughs> there is no Social Security needed. Now, if you're concerned and you think they're on the fence, there is a spot for you to put this Social Security number in. Now, you might want to ask for it. We're not pulling their credit. But if someone defaults, we are gonna go report them to the three bureaus. So we're gonna to need to find out what that number is. But we do not need it on the application. Hopefully, when I do the, the uh, when I show you exactly how to fill out an application, hopefully that has, that star, required star, has been removed. And no FICO score needed is very interesting because we're not pulling credit. You could, you know, be, listen, I, I went bankrupt back in, uh, you know, in, in the, uh, financial crisis, and my FICO went into the low 500s, right? But I was still fiduciary type of a person and responsible person that if you gave me a loan, I was gonna pay. So just, you know, as an FYI, even though we don't have your FICO score, you know, you might wanna ask them, like I said, that qualifying question, what do you think your credit score is approximately? You know, just for your own vetting purposes. So, but it is not required, and the beauty Beautiful part about this, this is available all over the world, everybody. As long as you have a checking account where the money can come out of through an ACH on a monthly basis, you have the ability to go to any country in the world and provide this program and upgrade somebody to the higher level 
by, you know, and we'll talk about what the requirements are for that as we go along. <coughs> now, it's only a 12 or 24 month term, but when you see the monthly payments, you're gonna get very excited, okay? 17.9% interest rate, uh, as I did the last presentation with Peter, the average interest rate on credit cards today in, the, in, the, in this country is 18.45%, so we are in line there. We're going to suggest, we're not telling you what to do, but we are going to suggest that you get at least 25 to 50%. I try to get 50% down on all my, uh, all my prospects that I bring into this, but you want to make some money here. Because you're going to be working with these people. You're going to be their coach and mentor. And, you know, if you're going to do 100% financing for them, you're going to earn absolutely nothing for your services that you're providing. Makes no sense. Uh, and even, even the finance company suggests, you know, 20, 30, really 30 to 50% down. But 25 to 50 is good enough. It's your decision, though. It's your money. It's your business. Yeah, exactly. You're, you're spending money to recruit and find these people. You're spending your time to train these people. I hope you are. And not just taking the money and saying, I can't help you. Right? I hope you are. So your time is worth money. Your effort is worth money. And that's why we're saying just, <coughs> and we don't get this money, the 25 to 50%. We don't get any of that. You're getting that. So we're trying to look out for your best interest so that this way you make money because that's our best goal is to, is to give you ways for you to make money because we want you to stick around in the program. You're going to be happy and be able to support yourself, your family and things like that. So that's why we suggest 25 to 50%. If you take 20%, 10%, 10%, we're not going to know the difference and we don't really care, but we want you to be able to make money in the program. So that's why we, we state that as an average for you to be able to do that. The beauty here also is no prepayment penalties. So what, what does that mean to you, the members that, you know, that are, that are providing this service to somebody or taking it yourself? The whole idea is to not have any monthly payments in your lives, obviously, right? That's how the rich, you know, I mean, rich, you know, borrow money through OPM, like Peter's been talking about, other people's money. But if you're making sales, you know, and, you, and you're under this, this program, you know, it, it would make sense to eat away at that, um, at that principle that's left over, okay? And, you know, that might be on your third sale where you start, maybe you put 10% of that down, 20%, you know, and get rid of some of the principal as you're going along. Or, I mean, you can stay for the full 12, 24 months as long as you're making money and you're being responsible and making your payments. It really doesn't matter to Peter or I again. We are responsible for this. I bought this in for Peter and all his companies. And, you know, I, I like my reputation. <laughs> But you know, the bottom line is just do the right thing. That's all I can say. And it takes nothing. When I show you what we're about to do on the application side, you literally get this loan immediate. It's an immediate approval. You're not going to get rejected, and you will be approved, and you'll, you know, you'll have to sign some documents you know, electronically, and off to the races you go. Yeah, it's a two-edged sword, you know, and no, you see all these different things and no prepayment penalty and you get activated immediately at the higher product level, which is, that's a holy cow thing, guys. Holy <laughs> cow. Really, holy cow. It's like you're getting the goose that laid the golden egg ahead of time without having to pay for the golden egg. <laughs> right? I like that. You know what I mean? That's a, that's a new one I just made up. But, yeah, I like that. I write that down. But it's, it's so true, but you have to be responsible with great respons great power comes great responsibility, and you have to be able to do that because we want it to last a long time. So uh, here's a sample that we put together, and yeah. again, you want to make sure that you get yourself money down because that's your cash flow to be able to pay your bills, to pay for your marketing, put some money towards for future marketing, things like that. And it also, we all know that if people have skin in the game, what are they probably going to do? They're going to work harder and they're going to be responsible too. If you've been around networking as long as I have, as long as Walter has, the less money they put down and God forbid they put no money down, guess what happens? Usually, does anyone want to type that in? They do nothing, right? Because there's no skin in the game. They're like, oh, no money in? Well, okay, here's another shiny ball I'm going to jump after because I have nothing to lose because I have no money down. The more money people put down, the seriouser they are with the business. That's an absolute fact. I, I strongly recommend, do 
do not take zero money down. Strongly, strongly, strongly recommend that. If you do that, you're just failing the system and failing yourself. Hey, uh, just for just if I do this as well myself, my son came into the business. I made him pay. I made him give me my pass up, the whole thing, the admin fee, everything, because I wanted him to experience what it was like to do it the right way. Why would I take away the value I was going to give him to be able to find the money? There's a, there's a value in being able to be resourceful and find the money. And I understand people don't have money. In some cases, they can't afford to do certain things. But there's, a, there's an intrinsic value to be resourceful, to find the money, to be able to do it, and you never forget that. And why was I going to rob him of doing that? So, again, with you, if someone says, I just don't have the money, then you have to have the intestinal fortitude and the integrity to say, listen, you have stuff that's not making you money, sell it. Right. When you do this program and you find the money to do this program, you're never going to be in a position again to be able to say, I don't have the money. Why should I rob you of the value of finding the money? That's a whole opposite way to think about it. Does that make sense, Walter? Yeah, it makes total sense. Listen, I'm still waiting for my son's uh, pass up and easy one up. So, and he's going to give it to me as well. He yeah. is going to. Yep. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's a big value thing. And, uh, and unfortunately for most network marketers, they don't think that way. They think, oh, I have to have a body. To do that, I have I need bodies in there, and whether they pay or not doesn't matter. I know I get it. When I first started in 1990, I, we had printouts at that point, and I thought the more bodies I had on there was was, was the main thing. It's not the main thing. It's not. Hey, listen, we it's just got that, to in the chat, Peter. We've got if you take zero money down, what's the point in having that person join? Very good, very good comment. Yep. So that means upfront dollars to you, cash flow purposes, money you can put into your business to accelerate the growth and advertise. So yeah. the second part of this is residual, right? That's what you want. That's your long-term income. So you have the money down and then you have residuals coming in 12 to 24 months, month after month after month. Imagine having 20, 30, 40 people do that and having that money and now you're the bank, right? Now you're the bank because that's how the banks do it right? They're taking your money that you're putting into the bank for savings, leveraging it out to other people and making bank on the difference. Why can't you do the same thing? So here's some samples. Again, this is only a sample. And Walt, do you want to go through these? Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I want to talk about the residual at the same time with yeah. these numbers. Because, you know, imagine what Peter just said, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100, you know, members going forward that are paying uh, on a thousand dollar loan. Okay, let's call it a loan. It's a layaway loan, okay? Just like the Toys R Us example I gave you. Look how low these payments really are. 12 months is at $91, all right? Now, you have to understand that 12 and 24 months, 91 and 49, 50, almost $50, everyone in the world, if they have any kind of a job or any kind of an income can afford that. So think about that. Everybody in the world is now a prospect to come and join you in your business, okay? Next one, Peter. $2,000, okay? Now, that's the layaway portion. So they're probably joining you at, you know, at, at whatever levels, okay? So 12 months is $183. Now, imagine this. Imagine you had 10 people, just 10, okay? And you're receiving $183 a month. Actually, less twelve dollars, so one hundred seventy-one dollars a month. Well, Walter, is that the, is that the uh, counting the the, uh, the interest, or they would have less uh, on the principal? Well, that's the whole payment. Yeah, the, the actual principal. Yeah, that's true. Thank you, Peter. You actually you caught my bad there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, on on a particular like on an amortization schedule, you'll see you know the payment will be broken up, and you'll know what this is because you'll be in the system seeing it. Let's assume, for argument's sake, right now that the principal is half. Okay, because as you're going along, um, it, it will get, you know, the principal will be way higher than the interest, and it's going to be because it's such a short term. But let's say that's $120. Imagine 10 of those people, that's $1,200. There's your marketing money for that next month to keep bringing people in. And we're only talking about 10 people, and we're talking small money. At 24 months, of course, it'll be a little less. It'll be set $60 or so, <clears throat> but in $3,500, you can see the payment is still reasonable. Still reasonable, guys. 
It's $320 for 12 months and $249, almost $250 for 24 months. Most people can afford to start a business with that type of a low monthly payment. The difference between a million and a half dollars in a McDonald's, where you're taking a $1 million loan compared to a $5,000 loan right now on the screen, look at these numbers. These are reasonable monthly payments, folks. 458 for 12 months and 249 for 24 months. A lot of people can now join your business at a higher level than they could before. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So let's discuss a little bit, and we kind of hinted on this a little bit. Who is yep. this not for? Okay, who is this not for? Again, we're asking for you to have the responsibility, the leadership, to not yep. have this to everybody. Okay, don't be greedy. Okay, you don't have to be greedy. There's plenty of people out here that can benefit from this, right? Just remember, your prayer, right? I'm sorry, your what you're doing right now is an answer to somebody else's prayer. So they're praying for something, and you got it. You just got to match it up together with somebody that's right, okay? Number one is people who want something for nothing. People who want something for nothing. That means putting nothing down, trying to get make money on that, and they're going to be the first people that default on the loan and have a bad mark on you and a bad mark on us, and it's going to be not good. People who default on loans, okay? And, again, you're going to be able to notice that as you start to talk to people. Okay, and you kind of get this feeling. You'll know. You'll know. People who never finish anything. <laughs> <Right>? <laughs> always have an excuse why they're not successful. It's always somebody else's fault as to why they're not successful. It's the man. It's the government. It's whatever it is, you know. They, they never coach, finish anything. My mentor, my sponsor. It's, yeah. it's, it's, well, yeah. it's everybody's fault. And instead of pointing the finger in their own chest, they're pointing their yeah. finger at somebody else. Absolutely. People who want get rich quick. Out. Okay. This is definitely not get rich quick. It is a system, right? It is a system. It's a methodical way to be able to go from um, average income to above average income in record time. People who take advantage of other people. Okay. People who take advantage of other people. You got to watch out for these people. So how does this benefit you specifically? We went over some of these different things with the money up front, with the residuals and things like this. Essentially, it's financial leverage for yourself, okay? Financial leverage for yourself. You're going to be able to accelerate the way you can earn money by using OPM. You're going to be able to get residuals and cash up front. Or maybe I should put cash and then residuals depending on how you look at it, right? So right. that's how it's going to benefit you, right? So the question is, can you play by the rules? Okay, everything has rules. This has rules. We want people to play by the rules. I've always built my company, which is a reason why around 20 years was we have integrity. We try to do things the right way. Nothing is ever perfect. You always go out with a plan if things have to be adjusted, things like that. But we try to run a business with integrity and professionalism and honesty. We want people to do the same thing and have the same culture and rules that we have. So we're asking you, can you promise to play by the rules? So my promise to you is we are going to keep this thing going for a long, long time. But we need some help from you. Okay, we need some help from you. We have to help from you to do it the right way, to get the right people, not to take everyone, right, and to do things the way we ask you to do them. And Walter's going to be able to show you in a little bit how that works, okay, and put in a little bit of time to learn how the system works to be able to go in your back office when, when we give you a system like that, to be able to understand a little bit about how things work before you just start going throwing it out to people, okay? So do a little homework so this way you're a little bit learned in how to do that. So yep. rule number one, again, this is not for everyone. I hate to beat that to, uh, to death, beat but it's so true. It. Beat it. Beat it, right? <laughs> okay? Again, if you default, you lose, you get terminated, and your credit score gets re recorded, okay, to the bureaus, okay? So this is a real loan with a real company, okay? I know you're not getting the money up front, but if you, if you default, this is not like one of those things where I come in, ah, oh, easy in, easy out. If, let me just see if it works. If you have someone commit to this or if you commit to this, you're committed. It's like having a car loan or something. You d default on your car, they take the car away, and there goes your credit. Same thing here. We're going to take the business away from you, and there goes your credit. 
you think about it, everyone that's on here tonight, um, you know, we don't want to lose this opportunity uh, to be able to offer something like this for the long term. This is a long term play. So, you know, if, if too many defaults, we lose the opportunity to provide this to our membership group. It, you know, a couple of bad apples and all of a sudden it hurts everybody. So be responsible, please. Now, and I don't want to scare people in that we're, we're really beating this to death with this, this part of it. But sometimes you have to do that to let people know that we're really serious, okay? And because the opportunity is huge, we have huge. to make sure that it's a proper groundwork to let people know that how this is going. And with this PowerPoint presentation, Walter, I think, um, you know, I know there's a lot of people on here right now, but before people actually say, yeah, yeah, I want a portal, they should watch this. And they have to, yeah. you know, they should have yeah. to watch this. Well, what we should probably tell people too, Peter, and it's true. I mean, this is how we're going we're to need to handle this. I mean, my reputation is very much on the line here. And, you know, I would like to, you know, personally speak to somebody, you know, not, you know, the, the leaders, and I want to, you know, educate the leaders and then educate the membership group. And, you know, this is not going to be for everybody. You know, I think we, we've determined they have to be at a certain level in order to even provide it, correct? Yeah, exactly, exactly. If, uh, if they're not at that level, we made a concession in that if you're not already at that level and say, say you're at a lower product level and you want to go to a higher product level and you still want to offer this, we really want your sponsor to be able to kind of recommend that you, you can use this service, okay? Initially, right. I wasn't going to offer it to people unless they were physically at that product level, and we had many of the leaders say, please, please don't do that. <laughs> you know, we want to get up there, but we also want to offer it as well, too. So I said, fine, not a problem. We just right. want to make sure that we, we just really just want to make sure that we have the right people doing it. And um, so tomorrow, we're going to be taking some of the leaders and setting up with a system because it all starts leadership, right? It all starts with leadership. Everything rises and falls on leadership. So what I want the leaders to do that want to take advantage of this is to contact me, send me an email, say, yes, I'm interested in this. We'll get back to you with a time for a webinar tomorrow and kind of show you how to get set up and we'll, we'll actually get you set up in the system. And then we'll kind of let it loose um, gradually over the next few days for everybody else. Okay. So um, at the end here, I'll give you the email to, uh, to send to me to be able to do that if you want to participate and be one of the founding leaders to get involved here. So the time is now. The time is now to take advantage of this. The time is now to be able to go to the next level with your business. If you've been waiting and looking for a way to accelerate, this is it. Imagine the product level that you're at right now, and imagine the product level you want to go into, right? And with the compensation plan that we have, you could make one sale at a big ticket versus 10, 20, 30, or even 50 or 100 sales at a low ticket. Would you rather make one or 50, <laughs> right? So all of these product levels that we have here are fine, and you're going to get people at all different product levels, but I'll tell you, it takes almost as much work to find somebody at a high ticket than a low ticket, right? Walt, do you want to explain that a little bit? I know you did a lot of high ticket yourself. Yeah, I've done mostly high ticket in my career, and, you know, a lot of times, as we all know, as you know, people in this industry, you know, people don't have the money but want to be at the highest level. That's the goal for everybody. We'll give you a way to do it. And here, here's your answer. Now, I'll take it one step further for people that are on here that are maybe at the lower levels right now. You know, you might really want to consider upgrading to the higher levels based on this product that you now have available to you. Right. So that you can earn higher uh, income going forward, you know. So if you're at a lower level right now, you can just pay, you know, the admin fee at the higher level and borrow the money and earn at a higher level, assuming, again, you go to your leader and you qualify, okay? And you're one of the people that are responsible in the eyes of your leadership. And I would recommend doing that, right, Peter? Yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, one thing that we want to make sure that, that people don't do is to say, you know, if you go to a higher product level and all of a sudden you default, you say, well, Peter Walter told me to do it. No. No. <laughs> We're giving no. you the option. You're telling yourself to do it. We're not telling you to do it. We're giving you the option. It's up to you to decide if you want to do it or not do it. Please don't point your finger at us as far as we're just giving you the option and the ability to take advantage of this. You have to 
think about it yourself, decide when you're ready to do it, we're ready for you, right, okay? Yes, sir, yes, sir, absolutely. So it's your time right now to take action with this, and we're gonna hold it off at this point, we're gonna go into an FAQ afterwards, but Walter's gonna take the screen and go to do a, um, a screen presentation of actually what the portal looks like, and then we'll do FAQ after that Q&A. Okay, I gotta wait for you to stop sharing, Peter. Got it. I got the video off. I'm now gonna share my screen. Get this thing out of my way. Okay. For those people on here, type in the, the chat if you're really enjoying this webinar tonight. Okay, that worked. So yeah, game changer. Everybody's saying game changer. Awesome info. Great info. Definitely love it. Thank you, guys. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I do too, actually. Okay, I gotta hide the video. All right, now I can see my screen. All right, uh, Peter, can you see my screen? Uh, yes, I can. Okay, so I'm gonna add a customer. I click the Add Customer button. How, that was pretty simple, right? I just All I did is logged into the system. Now, let's make the assumption you're me, you're already in the system, because I have to, we have to add every person individually into the system so that you have this opportunity, okay? Now, the recommendation is going to be in the very beginning that your leader does a screen share with you and does this with you, okay, until you are comfortable doing it. Now, you'll see up here, Multiplex Systems, Inc., okay? Membership number is not required. So I'm going to put my name in here. i got to put a weird last name because they recognize me all the time. Uh, maybe I'll put in uh, Walter Mouse, okay, instead of Mickey Mouse. Actually, I'll do Mickey Mouse. Let's change that Walter to Mickey Mouse. Okay. And you have to give legitimate information. This is not like you can put whatever you want in here. Okay. So I'm going to, you know, put in 123 Main Street. Um, we'll call it uh, Chicago, Illinois. All right. Now watch me through this. This is how simple this really is. I'm not kidding around when I tell you this. I don't know what the zip codes are in Illinois, but I'll make one up. And an email. You do have to put a legitimate email in here. So uh, I've tried a million times to put, I tried to put Fred Flintstone in here, and I put an email for Fred Flintstone in here, and it knew right away that it was not a legitimate email. So it is checking to make sure you have a real email address, and then it goes to green. Primary phone number. All right, just put in whatever, uh, what type of a phone number is my mobile, let's say. And all you do now, and seriously, you hit continue, the green button, okay? Everybody can see that? Okay, so select the loan program. All right, we'll do, we'll do an easy one up right now, continue. Okay, you see, so uh, they did fix it. So security number is here. I do recommend if you can get it from them, get it, just so that we have a record of it. But we're obviously we're not pulling anything because it's not required. Okay. So you put your date of birth in here. All right. They ask you if you rent or own a home. I own a home. What's your mortgage payment? You know, whatever it is. You put it in here. Your employment status. Now, hopefully they're employed as self-employed people or employed at a job, okay? I'm gonna say employed, all right? They are gonna ask you who your employer is. All right, so I'm gonna put my company in here. Oops. Trying to go faster than my brain. God knows my brain. I'm the president of my company. My hire date was back in uh, 1996 when I opened the company. My phone number 
put the same number in there just for giggles, no extension. And you're going to have to ask what their gross monthly income is. Okay? So right here, folks, right here and now, is going to be the determination on whether or not they can afford to make a monthly payment. If they tell you they're on disability, Social Security, and alike, <coughs> or unemployed, back out of the system and wish them well. Okay? If they say, listen, I make 4000 a month, great. Click continue. What did I miss? Field is required. Didn't I put in in that number? I thought I did. Okay. Any reason why they're not letting me go? Continue. Here we go. Hey guys, see how simple this is? This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous, okay? So, I am officially done with this application. This is how fast it is. It's literally a three to five minute, you know, uh, situation while you have someone on the phone, you're going through this information. Now, if everything looks correct, and Mickey Mouse looks correct right now, okay, I'm going to hit submit, okay? You Just a point in case you didn't um, get it le before, guys. For whatever level you want to join, the admin fee is not included in the loan. You have to Correct. pay the admin fee first. Okay, so if it's a split payment, then please make sure you pay the admin fee and you can finance whatever you do with the difference and uh, minus whatever you want to take down on it. Now, check this out, everybody. I hope you can all see my screen. I know it's written very small in the green bar there. The applicant has been approved. Now, how hilarious is it that Mickey Mouse was approved? That's why we said <laughs> that's, I didn't think about that. It's actually funny. <laughs> that's why I did it, Peter, because I wanted, to make, I wanted to drive this point home. Everybody gets approved. Look at my credit line, $30,000. Okay? That's pretty stupid. But it doesn't matter what the credit line is. It's all about what the loan is. Okay, so now you're approved. You have the customer on the phone. You click loan options here, the green button. Okay. Uh, get terms. All right, I got one more thing to fix, Peter. Uh, let's go. Let's just do $1,000, okay? Just for ease of use. Actually, this is, let, let's do the highest level and easy one up. Um, let's do it that. Let's do 2,000. 1,000 down, okay? Um, I don't need that. And first payment date will be December 1st because we're already in November 1st, okay? Get terms. Now, guys, you can pick out, I think it's up to 45 days in advance for your first payment to start. I think that's correct. I think it's 45 days. You can change it once. Um, you, actually, right here, you can go to as low as December 15th. Today's November 1st. 45 days from now is December 15th. But then your payment will come out every 15th, January 15th, February, and so on. But for just uh, illustration purposes, we'll leave it there. We click submit. Here you go, guys. I mean, this is crazy, okay? $75 a month for 24 months, $91.60 for 12 months, 17.9%, okay? There you go. We're done. Now, Walter, they actually have a 36-month payment on there, so I think they might be, we might be taking that off. Yeah, they are going to take that off. If you, if you notice, that payment would have been less. It says yeah. 75. Peter, I've been on the phone with them for three hours, since be right before here, literally 10 minutes before. Uh, okay. It's almost 100% complete. We're at 98% right now. That kind of stuff will be fixed. Right. 
Okay, that won't be there next week. Now, if you want to check this out, guys, on the bottom here, it says amortization, click here. I don't know how small it is on the other side, but I'm going to click that. Okay, and I'm going to make it big. Can you see that, Peter? Yeah. Okay. So what I want to explain to each and every one of you is how you get the residual payments. <clears throat> now, if you see the amortization schedule, your first payment's 91, yeah, your payment's always 9160 until your last payment, until 12 months. Your principal right next to it is 7668. And of course, principal is always going to go up month after month on an amortization schedule. Right. And the principal, guys, that's the money that you're making. Correct. That's so, where I was going. Exactly. Yep. yep. So the company is going to be paying, uh, you'll pay, uh, the, it'll be drafted out of your account to the finance company. The month after it goes to our company, we get a report and then we send you the principal. Less $12. Right, less $12, right. There is a processing fee that the lender does charge, so we have to take the $12 off. Right, and we don't get that, by the way. No, we don't get any of that. So as you can see, the principal payment goes up every month because the interest goes down every month, just like in a regular mortgage or anything, a car loan or anything else. So let's go to... Uh, let me Look at that. that. 12, after 12 months, you're paying a dollar 35 interest. <laughs> yeah, at the end. At the end. <laughs> now here's your 24 month payment amortization. Okay, same thing. And you can see balance remaining going down. And you can always pay it off at any given time. Okay. So there you go. Now, folks, I'm going to go back. Return to manage loan. I have to delete this tomorrow, so I'm going to get out of this and go back. Okay, here we go. And I am going to stop sharing and put my video back on. All right, folks, I hope that was as simple as humanly possible for someone to fill out an application in this in the world of finance. I've been in finance for 30 plus years, and to me, this is the most simplistic thing I've ever seen, so. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Hey, <laughs> uh, Walter, let's open it up to anyone that wants to ask any questions. If you have a question, just unmute your line. Uh, if you wanna unmute your video so we can see as well too, uh, and uh, so this way you can come out. I got some questions. Yes. Hey, D, you've been doing some serious chatting in there. Thank you for that. Awesome, awesome nuggets. Awesome. Appreciate it, man. All right. I made some notes of questions. All right. Now, I know you said they need a checking account that they can um, take out ACH from. Does right. that mean, like, you know they have online checking accounts that people get, like, with um, debit cards or bank cards or something like that where they can do ACH. Are those accepted, or do you mean, like, brick-and-mortar banks? Because people, some people use only – online banks like simple and stuff like that. So I just, you know, want to clarify that because a lot of people online use stuff like that. Absolutely. And that's a great question. All right. I'm glad this is being recorded because any financial institution that they can have the account be withdrawn as long as they can be authorized to take the money on a specific date on a monthly basis is a valid account. Okay. So okay. So ACH. Okay. Yep. Yep. Right. That'll work. All right. Now, of course, I got a few questions, but I think you might want to like, did y'all want to like go to the next person, like do like a round robin? How y'all want to do it? I oh, really ask, you, okay. ask, you, ask you questions because your question could be someone else's question. That's true. That's true. Okay. Now you said there's no prepayment penalty. Now, what I think that means is um, let's say they don't pay it for like four months, right? So part of they paid interest, part of they paid principal, but at that four month mark, then whatever is due principal wise, if they say, hey, I just want to pay it off. You know, I know I got another 12 months or whatever, but I want to pay it off. So they'll just be paying what, what is due at that moment, not the total amount of the loan that included the interest if they would have stayed in it for 24 months. That's correct. It's, if you notice back when I showed you the amortization schedule on the right side, there was the remaining balance. Yeah. Whatever it is in that month, that's what you have to pay. That includes the interest and that's your payoff thing. Okay. I see what you're saying. Okay. I'm, I'm familiar with that. Good. All right. Um, now, Okay, now when you went through it, you went through the whole thing and it actually tells us the payment. I was wondering, is there a way that um, we will know what the payment is like before 
we set someone up through the whole application because of, of course a person is going to say, well, if I put X amount down, then what will my payments be? That's going to be a natural question, right? Yes. So how we will, do we find, oh, I'm yes. sorry. We will get, we, uh, as you saw in the presentation, we already had some of those numbers there. What I will do for, uh, for all of us is I'll put together 1,000, 1,500, uh, 2,000, 2,500, 3,000, 3,500, all the way down to 5,000 because I believe, Peter, that would be the max. Yeah. Okay. And we'll have a PDF that um, uh, we can put into your back office if Peter authorizes that as well. And you'll have that there. So when you're talking to a prospect, you just print that, you know, have it on your desk. And depending on you know which program you're in and what level of interest they have, you'll be able to give them that number right then and there. Perfect, perfect. All right. Now, um, now this is something that wasn't answered, and I wanted to know, Peter, how are we going to do it? As far as you're saying that, I think before you were saying that a person can't offer the financing if they still have a loan out. I mean, but you said you were considering it on the last um, video you did. So what did you come up with? Are you going to let people, like if they say, hey, I want to get a thousand, I want to borrow money, you know, get a thousand, whatever. Are they going to then be able to finance people and they still have a loan themselves? What, what did y'all come up with on that? The loan yeah. themselves didn't matter. That's mm -hmm. not what Peter mentioned. Okay. So it doesn't matter if they still have a loan out, they can still give a loan. Absolutely. Absolutely. As long as they have the responsibility and the wherewithal to make that monthly payment, it matters not if they have a mortgage, a car loan, or any other loans out there. It matters not. Okay. All right. All right. Now, what did you guys come up with was the lowest loan amount? Because I, I know Peter had said that um, you wanted the loan to be for a thousand and a two thousand dollar level, but did y'all have something else like can a person take a loan out and a loan amount only be five hundred? Because think no. about it. Oh, now, what you about to say? The $1,000 is the minimum loan amount. You saw how small those monthly payments were. All right. The, the lender and Peter and I just don't want to deal with anything below $1,000. All right. Now, with that being said, I just want to make sure that we're clear, right? Because say a person wants to get a $1,000 level, right? But they have $500 they, they, they're putting down on it. Well, that means the loan amount is only $500 left, right? So in that case, based on what you're saying, that means that they would not qualify for the loan because the minimum loan amount would be less than a thousand. So I want to make sure we're clear if that's what you're saying. I just want to know. That is what we're saying. Yes. That is okay. Minimum loan amount is a thousand bucks. Okay. That's right. That's okay. Got you. All right. The whole now, purpose of this D is uh -huh. to bring them, bring them in at to twenty five hundred, and you know have them give you a thousand and borrow the other thousand. Okay. Okay, because if the minimum loan amount is a thousand, what it sounds like is that anybody who wants the thousand dollar level won't be able to take advantage of this loan thing unless they came in with like zero percent down, which we're saying not to do anyway. Right. So make sure everybody that that makes sense, right? Right. I okay. don't recommend zero down at all. All right. Um. Or as far as defaults, uh, I know you said the account will be terminated, but at one point previously, uh, Peter, you were saying something like. If whatever they paid into at that point, their account will go down to that amount. So let's say somebody, they, they took a loan out to get the $2,000 level, but they only paid enough payments to cover the, the $500 level, let's just say, right? So mm -hmm. does that mean if they default that they're going to go back down to the $500 level or does it mean game over, it's over for you, thanks for playing? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's on a case-by-case -case basis. You know, I don't want to be absolute with, with things like that. We'll do it on a case-by-case -case basis if... <laughs> If we con we're going to try to contact them, and if there's a hardship or something going on, and they're responding back and forth to us, we're we're going to cut them a break. If if they're just like out to the winds, they never contact us or something, then it's game over. They're done. So we're going to play it by case by case basis. So we're um, we're not here to penalize people. We want to you know be able to work with people, but if they're not working with us, we can't help them. All right, I got you. All right. Now you said um, originally you were saying that the ones that could give out the loan would need to be on the thousand or the twenty five or two thousand dollar level. But then you I think you also said now that if a sponsor said that yeah Joe can Joe is on the five hundred dollar level, but Joe could give out the loan. Now that doesn't really make sense. Hear me out. If the minimum loan amount is a thousand, then how is somebody gonna be below a thousand and give out a thousand dollar loan? It's not gonna benefit them. It's gonna roll up to the sponsor. Yeah, because a hundred percent rolls up, they don't get any portion of that. Right. So, because because you were saying, now I just want to make sure I might have misunderstood you though. It sounded like you were saying mm -hmm. that 
people who are in a thousand and two thousand can definitely give out the program, right? Give out, give out the, uh, the labor. Right, they're going to benefit from it. Right. 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 And you were saying on, if the, if the sponsor basically vouch for the person below them and said, Hey, you know, Peter, I think this person is a good person. Can they also do the financing and, and allow them to give the program out? But how can they, if they're on the 500 level, let's say I, I, well, I say John. It's not going to benefit them. Yeah, it right. won't benefit them. So they, it, anybody below those levels, don't even bother asking to be giving out loans because it's not going to benefit you at all. That's okay. why I said, if you remember, guys, this is the time to upgrade to those higher levels to you participate did say that. in this program. You did right. say now, that. Now, those people that are with uh, other programs that we have, like National Wealth Center, goes up to 7,500, then, you know, the same rules and so on apply to people who want to go into those higher levels as well, too, there. I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. Okay. Well, that, that's, that's definitely a good point. Um, now, one more question that I wrote down. When you was going through your, your demonstration and everything, right, um, at the very end, when it was time for go ahead and submit at the end that you didn't show us, you stopped there. My question was at the very end of the application, is there going to be like a duplicate that they get in their email for their records? Are we going to get one and the company gets one or, or what have you guys? You did, that out? Yes. What you did not see is the actual documentation. Okay. Um, and there is, there is documentation that will be executed by the point by the member. Okay. That's going for the loan. All right. Is it something they'll have to print out, or is it something they can sign like on a computer? Because I you know can it can be by a printer. Or... You can print it out, scan it, and upload it. There's a you know different ways and different methods to do that. Okay. But, uh, it's not official until it's. Okay. Yeah, it has okay. to be accepted by the finance company. Right. Okay. Okay, I got you. And how long? I didn't know that part. And so, how long does it take for the finance company to actually accept it? Very quick. I mean. Less than 24 hours. Okay. So I'm just kind of getting an idea, you know, to let them know, hey, yeah, you got approved, but calm down. You got to wait a minute, 24 hours for them to officially accept it. And then at that point, Peter, the system is going to allow it to be opened up once the finance company says, okay, yeah, you're ready to go. Right? Right, exactly. We want to make sure that everybody does not go forward and start sponsoring people at a higher level until they are actually confirmed in their actual account for the program has been confirmed at that level and they actually, their product opens up. Once your product opens up, you see the padlock on the left-hand side opens up, you can get access to your products, you're good. But don't start promoting until you see that because otherwise okay. it can pass you. And make, it, make sure that you've, got, you've received uh, the down payment from them as well, guys. Yeah. Okay, so you wouldn't want to, this is what I'm thinking that you're saying. You got, you got your down payment, right? So you wouldn't want to put the application through until you got your down payment because once the application goes through, you guys aren't, aren't going to know if we received that down payment or not. You guys are just doing what you do. Well, the finance company is doing what they do and processing and saying, yeah, they're good type deal. So, so we would want, this right. is what I'm thinking, we would want to make sure we get our down payment Absolutely. first before we put in the app because once the app is in, it's going to be an automatic process. Right. And this is the way you do this, D. Okay. And you, and you say this to your prospect that, you know, you're trying to sell, Okay. Uh, as soon as I receive uh, the 50% down, because that's what I do, okay? As soon as I receive my 50% down, we're going to fill out the application because I already know you're going to be approved because everybody's approved. Right. So have that power inside to say those things, okay? So you got to send me my $1,000 first. Once I receive my $1,000, we'll set up an appointment. We'll do a Zoom session. We'll do a, you know... Um, an online session where we can share screens and talk to each other and I'll take your application and you'll be approved right then and there. And the next day you've got access to your product, but you have to have your money first. <laughs> that makes sense. All right. And how will this actually work with the pass up process? Um, Cause you know, mm -hmm. obviously the pass ups are, are automatic in the system, but when they're going in and they're talking to me and let's say I'm on a $500 level, let's just say, and they're talking to me, yeah, I want a thousand, but they're talking to me, but, Mansell is my sponsor, so I can't do nothing for them. So how does that work with a pass up situation? Do we do it? Is it our responsibility then to say, hey, man, Mansell is above me at this level. You need to reach out to Mansell, you know, or exactly. just tell them what, you know, what to do. Yeah, it's always That's, in the hands of the person receiving the money. Yeah. It's whether they accept, whether they don't accept, how much money they take down, how much they don't. It's always up to them. You can't dictate to them how they're going to run their business because they're running their business by taking the money 25% uh, down where somebody else might take 50. Right, so it's up to the person who's receiving the money that uh, they would accept it or not, or how much. 
All right, so we would, so if they're one in a level that we don't have, because we're not up there yet, basically, all we can do is say, man, we don't, I don't got that level. So you can see my sponsor, or you can do what you want to do, but I can't, I can't do the financing on that level. I just, ain't nothing I can do for you. Now, there's another side to that coin, too, D. Okay. It's the opposite of what you just described, and they're not uh, in the finance program. They're not a user in it. Okay. Uh, at that point, what I would, you know, do is, again, doing the right thing, my mantra, um, is do the application for the pass up person and just, you know, just, you know, help them out. You can do that. You could do that. If you're a user inside the system, you could do that. Uh, so it'll, so inside the system, cause I didn't know that inside the system, it'll show who ours inside the system. You'll be, if, if you're one of the people that's going to be a user of this opportunity, Mm -hmm. Have your own login information. You'll have your own credentials. You'll go into the system just like you saw me do. You'll yeah. click the green button that says "Add Customer" and yeah. you'll fill out an application for that individual, even though you're not receiving the money. Somebody else is, and you just help them out at that point if you so choose. I'm not suggesting you have to do that, but that's probably what I would do. All right, I see what you're saying. Um, it only takes three to five minutes to get this thing done. Right, right, right. I see what you're saying. Look. I wouldn't want nobody to do that for me because then they might take, you know, they might be having the people uh, doing the wrong down payment. I would rather, no, you know, I'd rather vet my people before, before somebody else vet my people because they'll be done. No, oh, yeah, get in every D. And I'm like, nah, they said they don't have no job. I mean, you know. I agree. I agree. Okay, I see what you're saying. I see what you're saying. All right, let's, uh, D. Uh, no, that's you, it. That's it. Go ahead. You're good? All right. Yep. Uh, anybody else? Any other questions out there? Unmute yourself and come on. Yeah, I got a, I got a question, guys. Hey, Daniel. How you doing, man? I'm doing great, buddy. Awesome. Peter, how are you, man? Uh, so I might have, hopefully I didn't miss this point, but um, are we still taking the down payment as in the traditional ways, you know, via PayPal or whatever it is? Yeah. And no then one. once the loan is, the application is filled out, and so we, should we wait 24 hours before we mark them as complete in the system? And again, is that the same traditional way we would typically mark them complete? Yeah, exactly the same way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because technically, you're gonna you're gonna be the one marking them paid, not us. Because you're you're responsible for your own money, right? We've already got the admin fee ahead of time, so they would have paid online or paid us whatever way, and we'll mark that portion paid. So as soon as you mark them as paid, they're technically they're active in the program. So that's up to you to handle that however you want. Whether you want to wait for the loan to be finished uh, or not, it's up to you. It's up to you. Yeah. I think what happens if you mark them paid and um, then they don't finish it off. You have to tell us and it's all, we have to go backtrack and the whole thing. So you want to, you know, take a little time to make sure they're in the system. Yeah. It's, it sounds to me like the best practice is going to be just bearing, because I mean, if effectively we can't even bring people into the 1k level. We're bringing them into the 2k level based on right. the loan amount. So I would, for me, best practice would be let them pay the admin fee first down payment. And then I would wait 24 hours and then mark them complete. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, you missed the step there. You still have. You, 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 you've been a Well, yeah, the application piece, obviously. Right, right. Good job, Dan. Hey, Peter, can you hear me? I sure can. Yes, hey, sir. Hey, it's Brandon here. Um, just had a couple of quick questions and shout out to D because she knocked off like three or four of my questions. Yeah, that was great. I told you <laughs> I was going to <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I just had a couple of questions and some of this might may have been covered. I may have just missed it. Um, so as far as the, what the, the point where they start putting in their checking account information, that's handed by the loan, by the, by the company, right? The financing company, right? Yeah. So mm -hmm. We just do the application. They send out. No, the no, no. Um, let me go through that, Brandon. I, I couldn't go to that step. There is one more step. And that step is once uh, I would have hit continue, that's where all the banking information would have came up. You would have had a routing number there. You would have had an account number, a bank address, the whole nine yards. That would have been the last final step. Uh, unfortunately, you can't do that in the presentation because now it becomes a legal document. So I had to stop where I stopped. Okay. So you, you are correct. Okay. So they will, so we, we do need to get that information. Then. You're going to do that at the exact same time you're on the phone with them. Okay. Because you, you saw how quickly this thing got approved. But within a second, everybody's approved. So the next step would have been to put in the account information on where, you know, the money's going to be coming out of. 
and then you would have hit submit and now and then the documentation and the loan documents would have been generated and that's where the signatures all take place at that moment in time and we're going to go um you know in the very beginning because somebody like yourself is obviously going to use this uh, I'm going to be, you know, in the forefront of this for all of you in, in the very beginning until we hire more people to facilitate this. So I'll work with you, Brandon, and, uh, you know, really train you and, and, and make sure that you're okay and, and ready to go. Okay, perfect. And um, if they, and I think I know the answer to this, but if they default on their payment for one of the high ticket products and um, they, they're not terminated from, I'm going to use National Wealth Center. Um, they're not terminated from National Welser. They're just terminated from that product level, right? From that level. They'll be dropped down to where their down payment was given to you, okay? So, you know, if you took a 50% payment, obviously, they're going to drop down one level. Gotcha. Gotcha. That makes sense. Okay. And uh, do we, are, after everything goes through and they've been, of course, they're approved, <laughs> but once all that goes through, do we mark them paid or do, does the company mark them paid? You do. You do. Okay. Okay, cool. Yeah, and just one thing for Brandon, for National Wealth Center, because it's each program I have is slightly different in that uh, we expect them at those tickets to pay for the lifetime admin fee. Okay, got you, got you. So that needs to Otherwise be- Otherwise we make no money, you know? <laughs> yeah. Okay, got you. So they can't do the, for National Wealth Center, they can't do the, the 1995? No, no if, they're, if they're gonna do that, we expect them to at least, you know, pony <laughs> up and pay the company a little bit of money. Show us some love, you know? Yeah. So what about the yearly? Could they do yearly? Um, yeah, that's fine. They could do yearly. Yeah. Okay. So yearly would be okay. Okay. So let me just make sure, and this is my last question. I just want to make sure I understand the process. And I think the last gentleman uh, went over this, but so first off, we need to find out if they're a good fit for this. And yeah. then the next step is to have them pay the admin fee. And the next step is to have them pay the down payment. Yeah. And then we go through the application and get them going. That is correct. You nailed it. Cool. cool. Perfect. All right. That's it. That's all I got. Thanks, guys. I can see you putting a doc together for that. I'm, I, hey, I'm putting it all together. I got notes, man. <laughs> Excellent, Brandon. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Anybody else? We'll go with one more person before. Oh, I... um, hey, uh, Walter, somebody had a question they typed in is once it's sent to the, the finance company, how do they know they've been approved and they're accepted? Do they get a notification at all? Or how do yes. They... Email. They're going to receive an email. The email that they, they, that they put in the system, their actual email address, they're going to receive the docs there. They're going to receive the terms and conditions. They're going to receive the approval. They're going to receive everything inside their email address. The person uh, that actually did the loan or the person that, that was putting them through to the loan? Which one? Both of them? No, not both. It would just go to the, the new... Uh, the, the new person that took the loan, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And then, the, then all they do is they just tell tell their sponsor and they'll be good. That's it. Can you hear me? This is Steve. Hey, Coach Steve, what's up, buddy? Yo, what's up, what's up, Walter? <laughs> <laughs> Great presentation, guys. Wow, very informative. I'm extremely excited. Um, as it relates to national, because this, this, this topic of the $1,000 level, you just clarified a lot of points. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't appear that a person would actually be able to get a loan at the thousand dollar level since the uh minimum loan is a thousand and we got to take at least a 25 to 50 percent down payment so the, right. the, the the lowest level they'll be able to come in at with easy one up or even hand of heaven is the two thousand dollar level now with national wealth center that the next level after the thousand is the 3500 so does that mean with nwc the lowest level a person would be able to get a loan at would be $3,500. Uh, that, yeah, that appears right. Now, you know, Walter, it's, if we get a super strong amount of people that are really wanting to do the thousand dollar level, you know, we'll, we'll discuss it, you know, um, but at, if somebody's taking a loan for 500 bucks over a year or two, they're going to make payments for like next to nothing. So that's right. what we're saying. You know, it's, it's so, it's so ridiculously small. Sure. That, um, that's that's the only reason why we were kind of hesitant to go with that low on a loan. Right. And, and think about it too, Steve. You know, at the end of the day, isn't the whole purpose to get the people at the highest level possible? To oh no, I agree. Um, no, I'm with you. I'm with the the, the see be, being that we were promoting it as the minimum loan is a thousand. That's not actually the case. The minimum loan is actually 
2000 to 3500 depending on what program you want to get involved in. No, the the if you want to go into 2000 level at easy one upper hand of heaven, then it's a thousand. Right. Because you're taking you can't, a get, a, you can't down, get a loan at a thousand. Down, Fifteen hundred down, something like that. No, right, you can right, get, exactly. Right, you can get a thousand dollar loan, Steve, to buy into the twenty twenty five hundred dollar level at easy one. Right, right. I see what you. Oh, okay, Just, uh, again. So the the minimum level that you can come in at then with easy one up hand of heaven is the two thousand dollar level. Right. And the minimum level you can come in at with NWC is the thirty five hundred. So I'm with you there. You can get a thousand dollar loan okay now i'm clear all right so yeah. so for those those programs you would pay five hundred dollars for the admin fee a thousand dollars to the member or whatever they take and a thousand dollars for the loan you now is there is there a maximum on like let's say like i mentioned in the chat i have people that's prepared to come in at 7500 with nwc so is there a maximum loan that they can get i know we still have to take between 25 to 50 percent so if a person took let's say a 25% down at the $7,500 level, um, then that would be roughly um, five thousand, five grand. about five grand. Right, yeah. right, yeah. right. right. Five grand. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. 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 Beautiful. Thank you. You answered my Steve. questions. I appreciate it. Okay. Did you see, did you see, I got approved. Mickey Mouse got approved for $30,000. Yes. Okay. So <laughs> imagine, imagine you had a 50 K level. Okay. Right. You got a, I actually got approved. For thirty thousand dollars. Woo! Lovely. Right? Yes, yes sir. <laughs> Imagine, guys. This is so powerful. So look at it at those higher product levels, and the way the systems, all of my programs are structured. The first sale goes to you. So yes. if you make one, the the max, so much money is going back in your pocket to do whatever you want with. Mm. So pay it off to, with our cash flow, whatever. That's the power of a reverse system. Yes. The first payment goes to you, not vice versa, where it's a traditional up, where the first person goes to somebody else, and then the second payment goes to you. Ours works opposite, where you're the one getting rewarded, and it takes the risk out of the whole thing. Beautiful. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Sure. Peter, can I ask one more question yeah. here? Sure. And it looks like somebody else, a couple of people have asked it in the chat box here, so I was going to ask it for them. Um, so I know that the $1,000 is not recommended to take 0% down. Is it even an option? No, I would I would say no, and I'll find out if it happened because I'm going to be monitoring this. Okay, it's really not for that because if you have no skin in the game, Brandon, all right, well, most likely it's probably seventy five percent default. Right. No, no, I totally agree. What I was thinking though is if if it was even an option for people because this would still benefit the company and the lending and all that is if say they did because you're going to have people who have three, four, five hundred dollars and they want to finance and get into high tickets. Well, if we could get them to the $1,000 level and they start paying it off immediately day one, because there's no prepayment penalty, right? What if they had $500 to put down, but instead of putting it as a down payment, put that towards the principal? I don't know. Or is that just convoluted? <laughs> That's really going to be convoluted if you think about it, because you know, if they had the $500, they should put that down and get to the highest level anyway. Yeah, but it's not enough to get to a thirty-five hundred in national wealth. Five hundred dollars wouldn't be. See what I'm saying? No, but a thousand would. I mean, you know. Um, yeah, I know. No, I'm with you. I'm with you. I know. I, if they could find five hundred, they could find a thousand. So yeah, I'm with yeah. you on that. I know. I know. So cool. Okay, thanks. You got. Ask a quick question. One, one more here. Yeah, of course, guys. I appreciate it. Thanks. Um, so I don't know if I'm putting the cart before the horse here, but what is the, um, the process for us here, you know, asking these questions to actually get this uh, software so we can start doing this? Yeah. So what you want to do, and I mentioned I was going to send this at the end, send an email to, to me directly. Okay. Peter Wolfing at gmail.com. Say, Hey, uh, just put in the subject line leader, just the word leader. And then your information, so I know how to contact you. And then tomorrow we're going to do a, a get-together webinar or something tomorrow. So we'll be able to uh, get the leaders started in the program tomorrow. Yep. And what, what will happen in that Zoom session is we'll actually add you as a user with a username and a password that's for you. Okay. And uh, now you'll have access to the system. You go in there, you play around, you know. And, I, and I, I, like I said earlier in the call, um, we'll do a Zoom session next week, 
again and get all the questions answered for you based on what you you know what you're experiencing in the back end of the system. Yeah, uh, Peter or Walter, this is yeah. uh, Steve again. Okay, being that um, okay, I know personally I have several people on this call right now and they have your email address now. Will you be double checking to make sure, let's say, their sponsor um, is either in the program or is interested in getting in the program prior to um, giving that individual a portal that's requesting it? Yeah, well, that, that's a great question. So what I think it should get, be included in the email is who your sponsor is. Yes, right. Okay. Let's, I can always look that up, but but you know, have you contacted your sponsor? Are they interested or not? You know, because we okay. we you know you have to at least have been contacted them to let them know that you're interested in doing this. Okay. Because always, Steve, it's good to ask that question because we're always operating from integrity, and we yes. want to always give the sponsor the opportunity. Because heck, if I was, you know, sponsored by you, and you say you're going up, knowing the first person is going to me. I want to be able to find the money, and if they default on it, then then you're you're okay, you're free, and you'd be able to do what you want to do because you gave them the option. Price right. that and do the right thing. Yep, do the right thing. Absolutely. Yep. I had another question, Peter. Sure. Nobody asked it yet. All right, you said that um, when the person gets approved, they're going to receive an email, but you said the sponsor is not going to receive an email. Well, then how actually are we going to know that they got approved and they're they're going to tell me? Come on. We're just going to rely on them to tell us because once the mark them pay, they're paid. D, 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 they're all approved. <laughs> all right, that's not what I meant. I'm sorry. You're right, Walter. What I meant was <laughs> once the loan company accepts the application, that's the word. Yeah. Once the loan company, remember 24 hours, then a the loan company accepts the application and the person who actually took the loan will get an email. But what about the sponsor? Remember, we have to mark them pay. We didn't get you, an email. You go into your portal and you can follow what's going on and see whether or not all the boxes are checked and you'll you'll know you'll you'll have an act hey, Walter, does the uh, does the finance company check anything off that they've received they got the paperwork right. the next yes day? yes all right so yeah. so then inside your portal you should see something like that that's okay. correct okay i see what you said i didn't know that now what i'm working on right now with them is the ability for both of you to get that uh, email all right so that you will be notified via email Okay, I'm getting closer and closer. I almost didn't make this call because you know they set us up with a different program. So um, trying to get every, I'll get everything in order by next week. Everything will be clean. We may not want to even do the Zoom tomorrow, Peter. We might want to wait till Monday until I'm done. <laughs> Well, I know the, the the leaders kind of. I think they're jumping out of their skin to get going. Uh, <laughs> I can yes. see that. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. Okay. <laughs> Walter, when you were doing your uh, that mock <coughs> application with Mickey Mouse, you received the information immediately that the person was approved, and it showed the amortization table. Correct. So um, the, 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 the person, the sponsor, who is filling out that application on behalf of the individual, they are getting that information immediately, aren't they? Yeah, they're seeing it on the screen while they're doing the application, but Steve, there's one thing missing. Nothing gets perpetuated until the execution of the loan documents are complete. Negative. Okay. So we need to have that new member who just got approved. We need verification that they signed for this loan. Ah, okay. okay. That's not the saying. only missing piece. Right, when I said what... That's what D was asking about that confirmation email, right? Right. Ah, got it. Okay. Cool. Thank you. No, anytime. Now that doesn't mean we're going to be delayed in getting our portal set up tomorrow. <laughs> no, no, I can do that. I mean, I could literally do that right now. Um, I can. Let's, get so let's you know, do it. I'm we'll not going to do that anytime soon. Let's that do it going now. <laughs> Peter knows I'm ready. <laughs> Dee's jumping out of her chair over there. She's all <laughs> ready to go. Hey, listen, I understand, man. This is revolutionary. No one in the internet space has this, guys. I'm the only one. I brought this to Peter a year ago, right, Peter? Or no longer. Yep, and I guarantee you they're not going to mark you paid at the, at the upper level before you paid. Never. Never in a million years. Oh, here's another question. 
And I know, Peter, you you answered this question um, when you did your previous webinar. Mm -hmm. But if a person wants to um, get a loan for both or all three opportunities, would that be separate applications? Uh, yeah, that would be, yes. Yeah. Yep. Because we have to be able to track where, where we're going to be able to send the payments for what program, right. uh, tax purposes, things like that. Sure. Absolutely. Okay, we'd thank be, you. We'll be paying commissions and we have to be able to know uh, which one we're going to pay taxes to and, uh, and and 1099s for which program, things like that. Oh, yeah, especially, um, the residual. Sorry, Walter. No, especially the residual. That's what Peter's really uh, talking about is you're going to get a residual payment on each one of those three programs. And if it was all lumped into one, there would be no way to uh, segregate. Now, some of my, my, my international teammates have been asking me and I'm surprised none of them have, you know, jumped up and asked this question um, in terms of method of payment, in terms of when they're getting their residual payments from the company. Um, will they receive a check or will there be some electronic means for them to get their, their residual? Yeah, we, uh, we prefer company check, uh, but if you're part of a major bank, Chase, uh, Citibank, Wells Fargo, you know, the major ones, then we can do uh, what they call Zeal. Or Zell, whatever they call Z E L L E. Zell, uh, yes. We can do that. We can also deposit a check directly into your bank account if we know your bank information, so we don't have to mail it to you. Okay. So we just, we do that often for people. We'll just uh, go in and we'll put a deposit in their name directly into their bank because okay. we're in Manhattan. They're they're like all around us, right? So uh, so yeah. that'll make it easier for to do that. And uh, for those people that are international, we have to work with you on it. We can send a company check. We can do sometimes Bitcoin, depending if we have the uh, the funds in there. Not all the time. The same thing with PayPal. Sometimes we have funds in there. Sometimes we don't because we're, you know, PayPal and us are, it's always, a, you know, a, <laughs> you know, a, a good, bad with them. You know, always good cop, bad cop with them. So we <laughs> do it as best we can, whichever way we can. If it's sizable enough, then we'll do bank wire, but there's bank fees involved with that. And so we'll, we'll work out any way we can for people that are international. Okay, cool. Thank you. Yep. I had a question, Peter. Yeah. All right. When y'all was talking about on the email, let you know who the sponsor is. Were you saying just in case the sponsor hadn't upgraded yet? Is that when we list our sponsor on the email that we send you when we say we want a portal? If, is, if you spoke to them and they said yes, so they're interested or no, they're not. That's what we really want to want to know. Well, does it matter if they're interested? If I'm interested, why do I, I mean, why, why, what do I have to do with Mansell if he's just, interested? Just as long as you contacted them to, to ask them, hey, are you doing it? I'm Because always if, if you're going to upgrade, we always ask people to contact their sponsor first to say, hey, I'm upgrading. Uh, if you know that they're at the level or not, just to give them a chance to get there before you. Because they, because they would be getting the first payment anyway, so it's like a no-brainer for them to upgrade. Oh, I thought you meant if we wanted the portal, we have to say who our sponsor is and ask them if they want the portal first. You're not saying that. No, no. Okay. Uh, we want to, yeah, yeah, we want to make sure that that they have the opportunity to get to the higher level before the people that they bring in. I see what you're saying. I see what you're yeah. saying. All right, and I have one more question. One more question because I know I had asked you about the pass ups, but this is something I noticed. Um, because you said the pass up goes, the pass up and the money. Excuse me, the pass up person and the money goes up yeah. if it passes up. I noticed in my back office, I had received a pass up from one of my people, mm -hmm. but it still has that person listed as a sponsor. Is that how it's supposed to look, even though what you're saying is different? There's, there's, a, there's the sponsor, and then there's also the person they roll up to, so it's two different people. So you're always going to be the sponsor, even if they pass up. Okay. But still oh. going to be attached to the person above you. Ah, okay, I got because you. Because every, every product level is different if there's different price points. Right. Well, you can, they can roll up for one, but not roll up for another. I see what you're right. saying. Okay. Depending, okay. depending on the program that you're in and so on. Yeah. Yeah. Now, um, just for the people on the call here, just so, just so you know, the other things we're working on, we're working on uh, solid trust pay for um, for credit card taking. That is, the U.S. people are not able to do that. It's people basically internationally. They won't take people from the U.S. <laughs> um, and we're also working on Stripe as well, too. So, uh, so that's an option for people to take, uh, take payments through Stripe. So that's, that's something that's been requested for a while. So we're, we're, we're working on that as well. Um, we're also working on a function where you can actually download your genealogy in your back office. So you can put it onto an Excel spreadsheet and upload to other places if you want to. 
So we're working on that as well. A few people have suggested that. And so it's always a progressive thing, guys. We're always looking to make the system better and to continue to grow and just make it the best thing mm -hmm. out there. So, um, yeah. Yeah, Stripe, Stripe would be amazing, you guys. Uh, a lot of people ask for that. So uh, those people that can't do first aid or whatever, you know, you can do Stripe. So um, sorry, guys. If there's no other questions, that's about it. And I uh, want to thank everybody for coming on here. Any critical company? Um, that I'm not sure. India is tough. India, Bangladesh, and many other countries are tough. Um, oftentimes they, they, will, they will allow money to go in the country, but getting it out is always tough <laughs> to have them pay outside the country is always is, is difficult. So that would be on a, on a, um, on a different basis. So please email me and we can discuss if you're, if uh, you know, whatever you have any specific things for those countries. Okay. All right, guys, thank you so much. This has been recorded. We're going to post these on the websites. So uh, by tomorrow morning, you'll have the replay. You can watch it on the, the, the respective groups for the program. Okay. Thanks everybody. Have a good night. Great questions, everybody. Good night.